Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Mystical. Today I am bringing you the Fist Weaving PvP Guide for the War Within. In this guide, you are going to learn everything that you're going to need to play Fist Weavers in Arena and BG Blitz, because I got that question a lot. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. Why play Fist Weaver in the first place? I would have to say that Fist Weaver is hands down the most unique healing playstyle in the game. You are converting all of your damage, all of your physical damage in melee range to healing, which I don't think any other healer can really do. And I love that. It's also a, just a tool is how I think of it, because there are a lot of insane players that fist weave full time and what i think of fist weaving is is just a way to beat a certain comp i think that if you can master both cast the mist weaver and fist weaver you are you're unstoppable i i really believe that because there are certain comps like playing against like casters that don't have a whole, a whole lot of mobility that fist weaver just runs over and then there's certain scenarios like against frost mages where i think mist weaver can do really well into it it's definitely much better than fist weaver so in my opinion i think it is really fun to just run people over there's times where even though i prefer cast the mistweaver there's times where i log in or i queue into something and i just want to run them over and i have that option because i just i, I spag at a fist weaver and i quite literally just run over them I think a more important question to answer is when should you fist weave? So for me, I obviously mostly prefer cast mist weaver, but I think a fist weaver as a tool into certain comps because fist weaving, although there are some incredible players that I make, they, they just fist weave all the time and that is amazing. I can't do that. But fist weaving, it can be used against anything with casters, against casters that don't have a whole lot of mobility. So in arena, I normally fist weave versus demonology warlocks because they have very little mobility and you could kind of just stick to them you can also hit their pets so pet classes or any kind of range dps that doesn't have a lot of mobility shadow priest demo warlocks desha warlocks kind of i just their setups with like double coil they can kind of just one tap people so i kind of stay away from that and i mostly cast first that and then in bg blitz i do fist weave in bg blitz i got that question a lot on maps where it's predominantly like team fight maps so Eye of the Storm, where you're fighting at pretty much one node trying to get it, I will I will absolutely fist weave. Silver Shard Mines, where it's mostly a team fight and you are just in, trying to fight and that's, you're battling for that circle, I would fist weave that. Temple of Cult Mogu is another good one. Um, just don't get an orb because you will die in a stun. So I do I do, um, I do do like fist weave in Temple of Cult Mogu, especially if you're trying to kill orbs because any damage you do gets converted to healing. And so if someone's taking increased damage, you're doing more damage, which makes your healing better. And it has way better mana than Cast and Mistweaver. That's another thing. So in Arena, if you're ever... Uh, another really good comp I fisted against was actually Prez DK Demon Hunter, which has no casters on it, but the Prez will outmana you. And the DK and Demon Hunter can kick you and CC you forever. So Fist Weaving, great instant healing for, uh, from their damage. And then much better mana than Cast and Mistweaver. As usual, let's start from the beginning. So we'll start with the horde races. There really aren't too many. The only race you really want to go is is undead. Like truly, this is the best race you'd be as a fist weaver. The reason for this is because when you fist weave, you're mostly playing with two melee DPS, and pretty much every melee has a way to get out of fear. So rep Hallies have sank, warriors have their tremor, and then shaman have their tremor. So there's three melee that allow you to get out of fear, and then undead gives you another way to get out of fear. So you just rotate those cooldowns. You can rotate your Will of Forsaken, your Sank, your Trinket, Will of Forsaken, Sank. It just keeps doing that over and over again, and you should theoretically never be feared. Or if you're playing with two, like if you're playing with a, if you're playing Turbo with a Warrior and an Enhanced Shaman, your Warrior has a way to get out of fear, and so does your Shaman, and then you'll also have Will. So undead allows you to rotate your will of the forsaken keep you out of fears if you're scared of dying you can go orc but again hardiness was nerfed in pvp by 50 percent, so you don't get a lot of stun reduction anymore i would absolutely say the best race if you're trying to be competitive the best race for horde is undead for alliance i think you have two options you always have night elf as, as an option because again shadow meld is so good and it allows you to avoid cc and in those rare situations it does allow you to get to get drinks you can shout them out you can port shout them out drink in very rare situations when you run out of mana that's fine but i think the best race is gnome gnome absolutely with escape artist allows you to break any roots or snares 
on you, which is fantastic, especially if you're queuing it to mages, DKs, windwalkers with slows, anything with a spammable slower root, druids. This allows you to just break it and it allows you to connect to your target a lot easier. So I think gnome is probably the best race for fist weaving. If you're going to fist weave 100% of the time, I would be gnome. Stats are a little interesting this time around. Normally it's just haste verse, and I think haste verse is another great option to play as a Mistweaver, but if you want to do things a little bit different, or if you want to have the same talents for both Cast and Mistweaver and Fistweaver, you could play Mastery. The reason for that is the new talent called Korean Style that I will talk about, but what it does is essentially your Rising Sun Kick is affected by Mastery, and Blackout Kick are both affected by Mastery. So you can go Haste first Mastery or Haste first. I tested both on beta. I actually preferred the verse mastery a lot more. So if you're going to run verse mastery, I would recommend still getting a little bit of haste because the GCD is just a killer. It just feels so slow right now in season one because the stats aren't as high. So I would recommend going to about nine to 10 percent haste and putting the rest into verse mastery. If you don't want to do that, that is completely fine. 100 percent. That's completely fine. You could still go like heavy haste with a little bit of mastery. So go everything into verse and haste get to about 20% haste and then put a little bit a little bit into verse mastery but both work I played both on beta it just depends on on what you want to do I think if you want 100% fist weave you could just go verse haste if you are planning on playing cast a mistweaver and fist weaving so just so that you use the same set for both I would go verse mastery And now let's talk about talents. I'll start with the monk side, work to the misweaver, and then go over here with talents. Let's talk about monk talents. There are quite a few changes they made going into the war within. Your goal essentially for fist weaving is to just get defensives and get as much damage as you can. So you could see on the left hand side, I do go fast feet for the increased damage to rising sun kick. It does increase the damage of spinning crane kick, but it you don't really spin a crane kick in PvP. So rising sun kick is is great damage. You do want some mobility. So you go for Tiger's Lust, which is great. You want to reduce all damage taken against you. You get Ancient Arch, which reduces the cooldown of paralysis by 15 seconds and leg sweep by 10 seconds, which is great as well, because you want to be able to CC more often. And then you do roll you do run celerity instead of cheat torpedo because cheat torpedo kind of puts you out of range when you're trying to get to somebody. I do run uh, lighter than air and clash, I'll talk about, but I think roll is just nicer to have and then it gives you the you it gives you three charges of roll which is fantastic so you have more ways to connect your to any enemies that are running away from you chi wave is just passive damage first you have ferocity of juan so this increases all damage dealt by two percent play rop you get your fort brew and then i think you can swap between diffuse magic and yulon's grace depending on what you came into i think the passive yulon's grace is nice but I, I just like having to fuse magic a lot. I, I really do. I, I feel like the 100% the better option is Yulon's Grace. But I just like to fuse magic too much. So go Yulon's Grace if you don't like to fuse magic. That's completely fine. Save them all. Which makes it so you do more healing when an ally drops below 35% health. And then you go cheap proficiency. And then you get Clash right here. You get Clash which allows you to bring yourself to a target. I don't think it works on dummies. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work on dummies, so it won't work. And I know this looks weird, but I do run Summon Jade Servant Statue. The reason I do this is because it buffs your life cocoon when you play Kamikoro Lessons. And I want to explain why once I get to Kamikoro Lessons, but I do play Statue. And then I want to talk about some flex talents. There really aren't too many. I guess down here, there's kind of some... If you don't like Lighter Than Air, you can always go Flow of Chi. That is completely fine. I just like um, I just like lighter than air a lot, so you you could just swap between these two is fine. I'm trying to see if there's any more flex talents just so you can you know make any decisions on your own. You could dance of wind is also a talent that you can move around. The issue is there really <laughs> there really aren't too many talents to take because you're not you, you again you're not ever you're really not casting your healing that much. If you're not doing damage, you're not healing as a fist weaver. So. You're not going to go into Elusive Mist or... I mean, I guess you can get Instant Vivify if you're running Mastery. That's fine. So, if you, I guess if you're running Mastery, you can drop Elusive Mist and go into Vivacious Vivification. For a little bit of instant healing from Vivify. But outside of that, there really aren't there really aren't too many options that you can choose on, on the Monk side. 
Next up are the Mistweaver talents on the right hand side here. You start off by getting your Enveloping Mist, which is one of your best hots. Thunder Focus T, Renewing Mist are, again, this is a, another good hot. This is a cooldown I'll talk about later. Life Raccoon is one of your major cooldowns. And this is a talent I talked about before, which is Crane Style. Your mastery essentially is whenever you use your Renewing Mist, Vivify, Revival, basically whenever time you heal, it gives a second heal. And it normally doesn't affect Rising Sun Kick or Blackout Kick, but this talent allows that. So that's why I'm trying to weave in some mastery gear as well, because it's just, it's literally free healing. It's just a second heal whenever you use your other healing spells. So I like Crane Style a lot. Common Coalescence. So this is the reason why I play Statue on the left hand side, which I know looks weird, but what this does is every time you heal with Soothing Mist, you get a stack of Common, Co common Coalescence, which makes your Life Cocoon heal for more or absorb more so i'll drop these stats right here and the reason you want this is because fist weaver currently right now is not doing the greatest because we really don't have a cooldown to rotate i mean chi is probably your best cooldown but outside of that you don't have any other cooldowns that heal too well life cocoon is normally a major cooldown but it's super weak so this makes life cocoon a little bit better you just want to weave in your soothing mist from your stat because your statue will channel soothing mist and you just want to weave it in and you can it's channeling on me and it's giving stacks of common, common coalescence so it's not the most but it's better than nothing outside of that you get your revival which heals everything it's, it's a really big cooldown you can use it while stunned i only really use revival when i'm playing against affliction warlocks or like shadow priests everything else is is mainly restoral so i can use it while stunned gg talked about her but this is your big cooldown for cast for fist weaving this is what the, the you cannot waste this cooldown this this will no matter what situation I'm in, if I have Chi Gi and she is up, I my team's fine. Chi Harmony, so the first eight seconds of Renewing Mist, give it so make it so that you heal for 25% more on a target. So anytime you have Renewing Mist out there, just track the, the buff. I'm trying to find a PvP dummy. Where's that? Oh, there, there's the PvP dummy. It's over here. <laughs> I've been on the PvE dummy. So this makes it so my Renewing Mist heals for 25% for me anyone so anyone with this buff so that that's that's really really good and then these are the fist weaving talents on the bottom left hand side this is this is like the most important talent so first off you get your jade fire stomp so this is what activates your ancient teachings and it's really important this this right here so this gives me the ancient teachings buff that converts my tiger palm blackout kick rising sun kick into healing and then you get these other two talents that kind of buff your jade fire stomp so this first one ancient concordance makes it so your blackout kick strikes three targets and have an additional 10 percent chance to reset the cooldown of your rising sun kick while within your jade fire stomp and this is a buff that you get right here when you're in your jade fire stomp which is great and then if you run out of jade fire stomp it still lasts for eight seconds after and this is really important by the way, th this Ancient Concordance is massive because Blackout Kick has a chance to reset your Rising Sun Kick, and this makes it so it strikes three targets. So now you have an even increased, you have a higher chance of resetting your, your Rising Sun Kick, and that's the whole game of Fist Weaving. What you're trying to do is you're trying to stay in your, your little Jade Fire Stomp, and you're trying to reset your Rising Sun Kick because that's pretty much your biggest heal. And I'll show you, I'll show you how you can do that in a little bit. And then finally you have Awakened Jade Fire. So your abilities reset Jade Fire Stomp 100% more often while within your Jade Fire Stomp. And your Tiger Palm strikes two additional enemies and your Spinning Crane Kick heals three nearby allies. Spinning Crane Kick, again, not too much of PvP, but the Tiger Palm is massive. That is, that's really important to keep track of. I'll show you why in a moment. On the right-hand side, you're going for Shadow's Gift. I always find this awkward to play in PvP just because Shadow's Gift, it's a cast and you're fist weaving. But what I do with Shadow's Gift is I just make sure I use it on myself. I, I, I basically think of Shadow's Gift as a personal defensive, but obviously there's gonna be situations where, yeah, you're gonna want to use it on, you know, your teammates but for the most part what i do is i port and i shaylin's gift myself and then i port back and then this really works with your yulon i got a yulon here and i'll show you why in a moment but i kind of just use that for myself there are situations where yeah you're going to want to cast on a teammate but because you're most of the time you're playing with two melee it's kind of awkward because all the kicks are for you <laughs> it, like no matter what if you cast uh, they're going to kick you and then that's pretty much it. I do run one Resplendent Mist, and then, then the Gift of Celestials reduces the cooldown of Chi G by two minutes, but decreases the duration to 12 seconds, which is fine. And then I do run one Resplendent Mist, because, again, it does work with Mastery. But if you're playing with Haste, I would maybe just go with, like, T of... Is it T of Plenty? 
yeah, this gives you an extra rising sun kick and velvet mist to expel harm, which is great. I like Velvet Mist, but this is this, this is one flex talent that you can kind of move around. If you want a faster cast time, you can put it into Legacy of Wisdom. I'm trying to think of any other talents. If you want like a little bit more revival healing, you can go a lifted spirit. But if it was up to me, if you're mostly running haste, or if you don't even want resplendent mist, that's fine. I would put it into T of Plenty. It gives you four. It gives you four charges basically four empowered spells from your thunder focus t but those are the misweaver talents and there really isn't too much wiggle room again you have that one flex talent but outside of that everything is pretty much set in stone before i explain why these two passives are so important i want to show you one passive that i think all monks have now and it's called teachings of the monastery so what this does is tiger palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time stacking up to four times and then Blackout Kick has a 15% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Rising Sun Kick. So that's it right there. And each, it's each Blackout Kick has a 15% chance to reset your Rising Sun Kick. So what that means is when you Jade Fire Storm, you get your buffs. Your Tiger Palm, when you hit it once, you get two stacks of this Teaching of the Monastery. If I am out of my buff, if let's just say I drop these two buffs and I'm not in my Jade Fire Stomp. If I Tiger Palm, it only gives me one stack. So I'll show it again gives me one stack of teachings on the monastery because I don't have my buffs. But again, if I Jade Fire Stomp and I Tiger Palm, I get two, which is amazing because now it allows me to build up teachings of the monastery faster and allows me to get more blackout kicks faster. And then what the Ancient Concordance does is this makes it so blackout kick strikes three additional enemies and you have three stacks of teachings on the monastery. So for each stack, you rise, you blackout kick again and then you your ancient concordance makes it so you blackout kick more. So I'm going to just show you my damage real quick. I'm going to blackout kick. I use blackout kick one time and it hit 15 times. <laughs> so that right there, that's why fist weaving is so good into any kind of pet class, any kind of, even for just single target damage is absolutely insane because you can build up these stacks so quickly after you Jade Fire Stomp. All you have to do is like, you could just hit it once. I mean, you could hit it twice if you wanted, but you really just have to hit it once and then you blackout kick all these times. And then what you're trying to do, your goal is to reset your rising sun kick. So what you're going to do is you're going to rising sun kick, tiger palm, blackout kick, and it resets your rising sun kick. And you could just keep doing that. If people are stacked up, you could just do that rotation over and over again. But that's why these two talents right here are so important. And then finally, the newest addition to the War Within are Hero Talents. So you have two trees. You can run Master of Harmony, Condor of the Celestials. I tried both I, extensively. And Condor of the Celestials is the winner by far. So I'm going to talk about these talents real quick. First of all, you have Celestial Conduit. What this does is this empowers you. You radiate a bunch of AoE healing. And it, it, the healings increase for the amount of people it's healing. And then you can channel this. And it's a really good spell. I, I I genuinely enjoy this spell. You can move around. It's it's a huge heal. You can't get CC'd on it. So ideally, you press it after you get CC'd. But it's a really good spell to kind of recover. Then you have Zhuen's Guidance. So this makes it so teaching the monastery is a 15% chance to refund a charge when consumed. And then the damage of Tiger Palm is increased by 10%. Tiger Palm will never, ever be your top damage. But... I'll take the extra damage and I'll try to see if I can get a reset. Let me see. Where's my teaching right here. So let's see. I have four stacks. If I press it, there's a chance it gets refunded, which anytime you get free charges, there you go. So I actually just got two. I just got two free charges of teaching the monastery, which is crazy. That is, that is so good because I could literally blackout kick and get another reset my rising sun kick. So it, it's a really good passive. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you don't, but Overall, really, really good, good talent. Courage of the White Tiger. So this makes it so Tiger Palm if it has a chance to cause Yuen to claw or do some kind of damage to an enemy. And then that damage gets converted to healing. And then invoke Ch Yulon and Chiji have a, have an increased way, like increase your chance of getting Yuen. So if I, let's see, if I attack. So you, it, this is good because it just this is just passive healing and damage, by the way. This is just, you're just doing your, it's not like you have to change anything. You're just Tiger Palming <laughs> like over and over again. And you're doing your blackout kicks, and then if you Chiji, you get a, you get a proc from for for Zhuen. So you Tiger Palm, you see Zhuen pop up here, and then that procs on Ayuzu, and because uh, Zhuen gets proc, you get your instant Velping Mist, and then you could Tiger Palm, and Chiji allows you to get instant Velping Mist. So it just weaves together. You know, you your Velping Mist gives you, gives a shield, and you could use that shield instantly because you're using your your Chiji, which is fantastic.
this this one doesn't matter too much. I just go refreshing jade wind whenever Chigi is up because you're not gonna you're never gonna drop mistrap for refreshing jade wind. You're just not going to. So I just go restore balance. Heart of the Jade Serpent. I talked about this, but when you use 10 stacks of Shaloon's Gift right here, you're gonna get a buff for Jade Serpent. And this you this makes it so Yulon is decreasing the cooldown time of renewing mist, rising sun kick, life and cooling thunder focus T. And you also get this after you celestial conduit. So you can see I just got a Yulon proc, and if I celestial conduit here, once it goes away, I get a Yulon. So you have two ways of getting it, which is kind of nice. It, it's it's massive. Like this is this is huge, especially for fist weaving, where you're heavily relying on these thunder focus T's so much. All this passive healing is so nice. Then you have Nayuzu, which I talked about. So after Zhuen procs, you get a you get a little proc on your enveloping mist, which makes it so it reduces the cool the the cast time of enveloping mist by fifty percent. And Nayuzu makes it so you shield people for three percent of your max health. So I do have a proc right now. If I just fifty percent cast time, it's actually uh, instant. I think uh, that was a thunder focus T. So that uh, that was instant. But if I just Yulon here and I just Tiger Palm, I get a Nayuzu proc. And normally, if you don't if you don't have a way to make it instant, I just go for a Thunder Focusing Enveloping Mist, and it puts a shield out, which is amazing. I think when you're fully healed or fully geared, you're going to be able to... I think it's like a 300k shield. But most of the time, this is my number three or four heal uh, on my healing breakdown, which is great. So, again, more passive healing. You don't really have to change too much either. You're kind of just doing your normal rotation, and you're just Tiger Palming as much as you can. And you're going to use your blackout kicks and your rising sun kicks. And then you're just hoping for like a Zhuen proc. And sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But you get the guaranteed one from from Chiji, which I think is really nice. And it's kind of important, again, to not waste your Chiji at all because of how much healing you do. And then you get uh, Flight of the Red Crane. You don't really see this too much, uh, similar to um, Cast and Miss Weaver, because it's proc from your refreshing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick. But it has a chance to give you a stack of mana T and heal. But you, you're not going to see Chigi often because you're not pressing those buttons ever. And then you have Nyusa's Protection, which makes it so Fort Pro grants you a 25% a shield equal to 25% of your max health. This is going to get buffed the longer the seasons go. You know, as many seasons there are because there's more stamina on gear and it just makes the shield better. I did. I thought Jade Sanctuary was interesting because it healed you for 10% of your max health instantly. And then it gives you a 15% wall once uh, Conduit of, of Celestial Conduit was down. But... I don't know. I kind of just like the giant shield. Like you shield yourself and you get like almost a 1 million shield. When we're fully geared, it's going to be a 2 million shield. So I kind of just liked the this 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 one more. Uh, Chigi Swiftness. So your movement speed is increased by 75% during Celestial Conduit and by 15% for 3 seconds after assisted by any Celestial. So any Celestial you proc gives you a... Let me see. I'll just press Chigi here and get it get a tiger so you get 75 or 15 percent movement speed from chg swiftness and then when you're pressing this you get movement speed which is kind of nice it kind of helps you with kiting or if you need to get to a certain spot anything like that it's it's it is kind of nice and then we have august dynasty so this is a this is actually a really important passive to keep track of this makes it so when you cast jade fire stomp it increases damage of your next rising sun kick by 30 percent or vivify by 50 percent and this effect can only happen once every eight seconds. So if you're going for like a big, you know, you just coming out of CC, you can see I get the buff right here. This increases the damage of my rising sun kick by 30%. And that's just more healing. So you don't really, you don't really need to pay too much attention to it, but you obviously want to, if you want to, you should try to min max it when you can, just because it's the rising sun kick is your biggest heal. So keep that in mind. And then finally you have unity within, which it doesn't do too much. What it does is it makes it so you can press your Celestial Conduit a second time to kind of cancel it. And then it's duration to call. And then it calls upon all the August Celestials to assist you for 200% effectiveness. And if this is automatically cast when Celestial Conduit ends. So you could cancel Celestial Conduit or you don't have to. I, I just normally let it go. If I get seasoned on it, it's fine. But I just kind of just press it. And if it cancels, it cancels. Or if it goes through... That's what I do, but that those are your talents. Those are your Monk, Mistweaver, and Hero talents. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Uh, but that's what I've been running, and I've been having a good time playing it. Next up are PvP talents, and there really aren't too many for Fistweaver that you kind of want to swap between. I usually go Jade Fire Stomp, so this makes it so Jade Fire Stomp's cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds, and more importantly, the enemies struck by it are snared by 60%, so 
This gives Jade Fire's top a five second cooldown because they, I think going into the War Within, it was 20 seconds. They they made it 15. So <laughs> you have a five second Jade Fire's top. But if you're ever running into, if you're ever running into an issue where your team doesn't have a slow or, you know, there's a super mobile target, you, I would play this and you see a 60% slow and that's every five seconds. <laughs> I just refresh over and over again. You also have this slow right here. So if you roll through them, you can also slow them by 40%. So, a lot of slows for Cast of Mistweaver. You don't need to run this if you don't want to, because again, Jade, uh, Jade Fire Stomp already has a 15 second cooldown, and Ancient Teachings last 15 seconds. So, you should have Jade Fire Stomp every time you need to activate your Ancient Teachings. Peace Weaver, this is a mandatory 100% take every single time. So, this makes it so Restoral or Revival's cooldown is reduced by 50%. And everyone that gets healed by it is immune to magical effects for two seconds. So I would just play this every single time. You can immune CC, immune damage, everything. You can immune anything magical for two seconds. Or if someone's trying to, like, if a druid's trying to cast Cyclone on you and you're stunned, you could use Restore while stunned and you immune the Cyclone. So this is pretty much a mandatory lock in. Let me just put Peace Weaver over here. Yeah, this is a mandatory lock in for every single comp. I can't think of a single comp that I wouldn't play this against. For anything else, it also makes Restoral's cooldown a minute and a half, so it allows you to just rotate with your Chi a little bit easier. And then the third one, I would say, yeah, Eminence is really good if you're playing against anything with stuns. So Eminence allows you to port while stunned. So you can just port, and then port again, boom. That's kind of important against any kind of melee cleave, or even like RMP that has stun setups on you. I would just play Eminence. The last one, again... You kind of want to play, what do you want to play? You want to play the, I would say these two talents if you have to, but you could choose between Grapple Weapon or Alpha Tiger, I think, or Zen Sphere. Zen Spheres are really important too. So I think these two, I would say are almost mandatory. Zen Spheres, if you don't have the globals, that's fine. What Zen Spheres does, you could, you could put one sphere on a teammate and one on an enemy and it increases the damage and healing. So this is Sphere of Hope. They take 15% increased healing from me, and then Sphere of Despair, they take 10% increased damage for everything, and then they do 10% less damage to you. So I think these two might actually be mandatory talents as well. So Zen Sphere and the Peace Weaver. And then the last one, again, it, it's it's hard, but Grapple Weapon, if you're playing against like Warriors, or if you're playing against a Death Knight and you want to go them, you can disable, you can stop their healing. But I would say Grapple Weapon versus any Warriors. And then I think it would have to be like Alpha Tiger, or eminence alpha tiger is really good so what this does is whenever you attack somebody a new target you get 20 percent haste after you tiger palm them so if i tiger palm this i get alpha tiger buff and if i alpha tiger this it refreshes so and then these people get a debuff for 30 seconds but you can keep doing that you could do this for any imps any new imps that a demon warlock spawns any new totem that a shaman summons anything like that you can you get an alpha tiger buff and this is also really good in bg blitz like i mentioned at the start Mistweaver is really good in BG or Fistweaver. You can Fistweave in BG Blitz in certain scenarios. 100%. If you can go around in a team fight, you can just Alpha Tiger people and keep getting the buff. Like, do it over and over again. Any totem, any enemy, every 30 seconds, Alpha Tiger is really good. So, yeah, I would say keep, I would say keep Peace Weaver, keep Zen Spheres, keep these two talents, and then rotate this last one depending on the situation. If you are queuing into a warrior team, and you're really scared of dying, then sure, I would drop Alpha Tiger, go Eminence, and then maybe go grab a weapon here. But I would, if you can, Zen Sphere is really good, and Alpha Tiger is really good. So, and then Jade Fire Stomp, you could weave in if you really feel like your you, your team needs to slow, but you should not need Jade Fire Stomp anymore. Now that they made Jade Fire Stomp a 15 second cooldown instead of 20 seconds. Now you sh you should have Jade Fire Stomp to activate your ancient your teaching of the monastery or your ancient teachings, um, every every time you need it. All right, I'm just gonna assume anyone here is new to fist weaving or you're trying to brush up on fist weaving, trying to learn something new. So I'm gonna go over important important spells that you need to be successful as a mist weaver, fist weaver, anything like that in PvP. Starting off with blackout kick. So I talked about blackout kick. This because you have the teaching of the monastery passive blackout kick makes it has a chance to reset your rising sun kick and that is the name of the game when you're fist weaving you want to reset your rising sun kick that is normally your biggest heal tiger palm is what allows you to build up your stacks of blackout kick 
So this is important. You need to tiger palm. This you be pressing tiger palm a lot. Put it put it on a really good bind because uh, it's really important. You don't really cock practicing lightning rising sun kick. So this is just your biggest heal. This is, it's just damage. So this is what it is. It applies renewing mist through your rapid diffusion. So rising sun kick and envelop mist have a chance to apply renewing mist for six seconds. And this does apply with chi harmony. So if I rising sun kick, I don't know. This might like kind of just send a, a renewing mist to somebody. Oh, where'd it go? It went to someone over here, right here. So they have renewing mist and they also have the chi harmony buff. So that's why you want a rising sun kick as much as you can. Or another reason outside of a big heal, it re renew puts renewing mist on somebody and it puts the chi harmony buff on them that makes them take 25% more healing from you. So that's that's kind of important. That's just a 25% healing buff, which is great. Expel harm. This is a good heal for just yourself. You can only use it on yourself, but it's good. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice little mini heal for you. I would use it pretty much off cooldown if you're taking damage. Soothing Mist. So this is something you normally use, or Soothing Mist and Vivify. You will never Vivify as a Fist Weaver, so I wouldn't worry about Vivify too much. Soothing Mist, again, is very rarely used, but there are times, like maybe at the start of a game, or if I'm just kind of unlucky with my procs, or I don't have Thunder Focus T, where you kind of want to get an Envelop Mist out. So I'll, you know, sometimes just Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist, and just try that. But outside of that, you're not really soothing missing too much. You're never gonna press Vivify. You will you will never press Vivify. Uh other healing spells. Let's see. Slash O'Connor, we talked about life coons major cooldown. Shaylun's gift I talked about. You want to use that. You could use that as any stack as many stacks as you want. You're gonna get Yulon at 10 um 10 charges of it either way. But I again I talked I talked about this earlier, but I will normally just use it as a heal for myself. I'll pour it LOS, Shaylun's gift port back i'll get a buff from shahaz lessons i get the duplicate that's what i'll do there's that's pretty much it though that's the, i don't it doesn't go any deeper than that i don't think there's any other way really to use it talk about statue we got to dispel thunder focus see i'll talk about next section renewing mist renewing mist I, I talked about but this is your main heal the reason you need to renewing mist is for the chi harmony buff and you can apply this instantly through rapid diffusion so you should have you should have it up quite a bit of the time quite a bit but if you're unlucky like or i don't know you don't have you want to heal somebody you could just press it because again you're not really going to be renewing misting too often because you're going to be focusing on damage but yeah if you want to weave in like let's just say you're doing damage and oh uh, like i didn't put, get a renewing mist i'm taking damage i didn't get renewing mist some one of these guys did yeah i'll just throw renewing mist on whoever's taking damage and then just keep going but yeah there's there's nothing else to that Restore talked about Jade Fire Stomp activates your ancient teachings, which converts your damage into healing, which is important. And that's pretty much it for like your healing spells. I don't think there's really there's really nothing nothing else to talk about. If I if I'm looking at my bars, yeah, no, th those are your healing spells that you want to pay attention to. I'll talk about Thunder Focus T soon, and yeah, th those are what you want to pay attention to. The goal for fist weaving is to do damage you need to have uptime you need to do your damage most of it is based around not most, all of it is pretty much based around teaching the monastery which allows you to tiger palm and get stacks for your next blackout kick which will make your blackout kick do more blackout kicks and it also has a chance to reset the cooldown your rising sun kick all of your damage is converted into healing from your ancient teachings buff and this is activated by pressing Jade Fire Stomp. Okay? So you press Jade Fire Stomp, you get this buff. This buff converts all your damage into healing. And then from there, you're going, you need to do damage. So, how do we do damage? What's our rotation? You want to first make sure you put a Zen Sphere on your target. Um, and then put Zen Sphere on whoever you're healing. Uh, it's 15% free healing. This is fantastic. So, I would just put on whoever. And I'm just going to assume that. The person you're hitting is standing still. I'll talk about mobility in a little bit, but let's just assume for these rotations that your target is standing still. So you Jade Fire Stomp, you have your, your spheres up, you get your Ancient Teaching buff. I would start off by Rising Sun Kicking just for the extra heal and to put Renewing Mist on somebody for the Chi Harmony. From there, your goal when Rising Sun Kick is on cooldown is to reset it. You reset it by pressing your Tiger Palm. And again, I'm in my Jade Fire Stomp right now, so I'll get more Jade Fire. I'll get more Tiger Palm stacks from with Teaching the Monastery. I'll Tiger Palm, and I get my Rising Sun Kick right there. Tiger Palm, I have my four stacks, and then I'll Blackout Kick, get a reset on Rising Sun Kick, press it, Tiger Palm, 
if you want you could just go for one tiger palm and then try to get the reset that's fine it, what i what i would recommend is for if there's cleave damage like let's just say you could see there's what five people here if you're hitting somebody like a demo warlock that is a demo warlock and then has imps that you're going to cleave i think you you really only have to tiger palm once because your blackout kick is going to hit three additional targets and you get the re reset rising sun kick however if you're mostly single target damage and you you know there's no other person around let's just say you're hitting a mage right and they blink away i would probably just go for like a second you know because if i rise and sun kick here and i blackout kick i did get the reset i did get lucky there i did get lucky but let's just say i just go for one and blackout kick i got okay well we're getting lucky right now sometimes you're not <laughs> sometimes you're not so lucky um and you don't get that reset so um if mostly for single target damage i would go for two try to get that rising sun kick there we go we got the rising sun kick reset after we hit tiger palmed but that's what i would do if it's if there's cleave damage where you're going to get the cleave from blackout kick i would i would only tiger palm once because your blackout kick should reset your rising sun kick if it's single target damage i'd go for like two two tiger palms into a blackout kick and i told you we'd get here we talk about thunder focus t so let's talk about it. So Thunder Focus T empowers one spell. However, we are playing Focus Thunder. So it empowers two spells. And we're using our flex talent to spec into T of Plenty. So Thunder Focus T empowers four spells. Two of them are random. So when I press Thunder Focus T, I have a weak warrior here. All my weak warriors are in the description. Somehow it empowered two expel harms again. That never happens. This is the worst one that you can get. <laughs> it should empower Rising Sun King and Velvet Mist or expel harm two of any of them they could stack and yeah i guess anyway thunder focus t what it does is empowers spells does certain things depending on what you use the spell with so if i thunder focus t enveloping mist it makes envelop mist instant and heal for a little bit so if i just use it expel harm i get an instant heal from my envelop mist and it also shoots out a renewing mist because she uh wrapped diffuse and works with rising sun kick and enveloping mist keep that in mind that's that's good to know and then it empowers Renewing Mist that increases its duration. Vivify will cost no mana. Rising Sun Kick, the cooldown is reduced by nine seconds. And then Expel Harm, it will give you a nice cheat cocoon. So if you're ever really in a pinch, you can Thunder Focus T, Expel Harm for yourself and give you a nice little like one million shield. However, 90% of the time you're going to be using it for, actually 100% of the time, you should be using it for Expel Harm, Thunder Focus T, or Rising Sun Kick. And I would say, among that 100% of the time, you're going to be weaving between your Envelop Mist and Rising Sun Kick most of the time. So, it reduces the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick by 9 seconds. The cooldown of Rising Sun Kick is 11 seconds right now. So, if I Thunder Focus T, um, Rising Sun Kick, the cooldown is only 3. So, this is kind of important because you want to get out, again, the goal of Fist Weaving is to get out as many Rising Sun Kicks as possible. I got an Instant Enveloping Mist, so I can press my Instant Enveloping Mist, and I got another Expel Harm, so I Expel Harm, and I get a nice little, where's my little Chi Cocoon? There it is. It's weak right now because we don't have full gear yet, but it, they're actually really good. And you'll never use it for Vivify or Ordinary Mist, ever. Don't ever, you <laughs> don't ever use it for those two. You'll only use on the three other spells. So let me show you the rotation for your Thunder Focus T because again, you always want to be doing damage. You don't want to be just waiting for Rising Sun Kick to reset. You always want to be doing damage. So you'll put your cheat, you'll put your spheres up, put your spheres up, Jade Fire Stomp, and then let's just Tiger, let's just Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kick. Boom, I got the Rising Sun Kick. And then I'm going to weave in a Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, and then I'll Blackout Kick to get the reset, Rising Sun Kick. So what, how many Rising Sun Kicks did I do right there? I did four Rising Sun Kicks. It did 600k damage. And my healing is insane. <laughs> my healing. Like, four Rising Sun Kicks and what, like, seven Globals is just insane. And yeah, I got a, I got a T of Plenty as well. Buff there for my Rising Sun Kick. Which is massive. That, that's insane. So, Jade Fire Stomp. Uh, I just, I, I, it's habit for me to just try to try problems. So, I Thunder Focus I got Envelop Mist and... Um, expel harm. So normally I just throw an envelop mist if I have like an user proc, but rising sun kick, tiger palm, rising sun kick, tiger palm. We got a rising sun kick into a blackout kick because we just built up all those stacks into a rising sun kick. There we go. And again, it's a ton of damage. It, it's 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 so much damage. Again, four right there, 600k damage. My blackout kick. I use blackout kick once. It hit 15 times because they're stacked up. But that's that's your thunder focus T rotation.
One more thing. I was about to. One more thing. We need to fist weave into our rotation. But <laughs> one more thing we need to miss weave or weave into our rotation is mana T. And I did mention earlier that miss weaver mana or fist weaver mana is much better than cast miss weaver. Hundred percent is no doubt. You, a lot of your healing again. All of your healing comes from damage. These damage spells don't have nearly as much of a mana cost as like an envelop mist that you know cast miss weaver has. Or even Vivify. Vivify is more mana than Rising Sun Kick. Because you're not really spamming Enveloping Mist and it's mostly coming from your, your damage, press it whenever and then just continue with the rotation. That's really what I do. I have mana for the next six seconds. Look at my mana bar. <laughs> it's it ain't going anywhere. It's it's not going anywhere. So I would just say mana don't overcomplicate it. You you don't want to wait until your oom um or you have 20 stacks of mana to press it. I would say get to about I would get to about four or five stacks of mana tea, channel it, and then just continue with your rotation. All right, and Chiji. So the Chiji rotation is it's uh, she, it, there's a lot of text in this in this cooldown, but what it means is whenever you do damage, you're gonna get a charge of Chiji. When you get to three stacks of Chiji, your envelopment mist is instant. Okay. So that's important to note. And then you just keep going. You use your instant vault mist and just can you continue on. So this, you get a charge of Chiji when you blackout kick or rising sun kick or spinning crane kick. This is one of the rare times where I might, I might spinning crane kick just for that extra charge. And I'll show you why in a second. Maybe I'll run into those situations, but 90% of the time you're just using your blackout kicks and rising sun kick. What I try to do, if you're trying to mid max your Chiji is to tiger palm right before your Chiji to get like two stacks. And then you Chiji and you Blackout Kick. And because Blackout Kick hits a... When you have two stacks of Blackout Kick, it hits two times plus the regular Blackout Kick. My Envelope Mist is instant, right? So I get... And then I Rise and Sun Kick. I have one stack of Chiji. I'll Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Envelope Mist. And that's your rotation. You just... Jade Fire Stomp, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. And then you get a... You get an instant enveloping mist. And that's all you're trying to do. You're just trying to get three stacks of Chiji, make your enveloping mist instant. And because we are we do have our hero talents as kind of the celestials, when you with Chiji, we have a higher chance of proccing each when, which makes it so you're gonna get a Nayuzu shield proc. So what I try to do is I try to min-max that by using Chiji, getting the Nayuzu proc. I get a new eyes uh, strength of the black ox, and then I'll just use envelope mist. And then I get a shield and I get the heal from envelope mist. And you just continue on with your rotation. Always trying to use your Rising Sun Kick um, off cooldown. And trying to get a reset with your Blackout Kicks. I have two stacks. I This is a weak aura right here that shows it. So I get two stacks. Tiger Palm, I get another two stacks. Rising Sun Kick here on the reset. Tiger Palm. Everyone stacks. So I'll, rising, for it. So I'll Blackout Kick. Get the Rising Sun Kick proc. Or Rising Sun Kick reset. And then I have Chi-G back. So I'll always make sure I Jade Fire Stomp. I'll try to min-max it by just going for Tiger Palm to get stacks. I'll chi -G. Don't have folks team Velt Mist because I got a new Aizu proc and then I'll Blackout Kick. I get the Instant Velpin Mist here, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Velpin Mist, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick. And you just do that over and over again. And now I want to do the full rotation, but I, I want to move over to the single target just to... I feel like it's more realistic if, <laughs> if it's single target. So the full rotation right here. Put Zen Sphere on. You, you could do this when you're running into battle, by the way. You know, running and charging in. You just put your, your spheres up. Always just always make sure you're resetting it or watching it. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the rotation. Let me put my port down just so I could show you the full extent of the rotation. I also at the start of a at the start of a game, I will put a renewing mist out and I'll also put a statue down because you want to weave in a statue into your rotation just so you can get stacks of your calming coalescence right here to make your life cocoon bigger. But let's just say I'm just doing an arena. Do this. Jade Fire Stomp. I'll start up by doing, uh, building up some stacks of Rising Sun Kick. Because no damage going out right now. And I'll just tap the Rising Sun for my Soothing Mist. And then a Rising Sun Kick. Blackout Kick. I didn't get a reset. So that's realistic. I'll Tiger Palm. Tiger Palm. Rising Sun or Blackout Kick. Rising Sun Kick. I get the reset. If they start dying or if they start needing to take some healing. What I'll do is I'll Thunder Focus the Envelope Mist. If it's a quick heal. And then I got to reset my Rising Sun Kick. So I have... So many rising sun kicks. I can rising sun kick into a tiger palm, rising sun kick, tiger palm into a rising sun kick, 
to a tiger palm. So now I have full stacks of my my ancient te my teachings of the monastery. I blackout kick. I don't get the reset. Oh, I do. Okay, we get the rising sun kick, and then that's your rotation. I need to reset my jade fire stomp. I need to use my my sphere, and I just keep going with my rotation. It's more of a priority list. More, uh, it's more of a priority list than a rotation where you're just trying to min max your. If I get a Nyuzu proc, by the way, and I don't have uh, Chiji up, I'll just use the focus team belt miss for the shield. Where you're just trying to, the goal is to just get out as many rising sun kicks as you can, blackout kick with uh, your ancient teaching stacks, and then I'll Chiji into Tiger Palm into a blackout kick. I get my instant belt missed here, instant belt missed with Nyuzu. Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. I get the reset and instant velvet mist there. So I throw out my instant velvet mist and then I Tiger Palm into a Blackout Kick. I got the reset, so I'll Rising Sun Kick. And you just keep doing that. Make sure you refresh your Jade Fire Stomp. Make sure you get your spheres up. Tap your Soothing Mist whenever you can. But when you put the rotation all together, there isn't a whole lot of downtime. And this this is only on a target dummy that isn't moving. When things are moving around and you need to like roll and dash and you need to clash to them because they're too far away, it, it does get a little bit hectic and it is overwhelming at first. But I promise you'll get the hang of it. If I can if I can fist weave, you can fist weave. I promise you that. I'll man it to here and I'll just continue with my rotation. Uh, I got instant, I got an Iuzu proc there, so I'll use a rising sun kick into enveloping mist for the extra healing. And then I'll just keep going with uh, trying to reset my my Rising Sun Kick. And I got a free Envelopment Mist there too, so I'll just envelop Mist as well. And then to finish off your rotation, if you are taking damage and you do have some stacks of Shaylin's Gift, I would port Shaylin's Gift, port back, and then continue with your normal full rotation. As far as cooldowns go, I do have kind of a priority, but it really just depends on the situation. You have kind of four major cooldowns that you want to rotate between. The first one is Chi G. This cooldown, like I've said before, is like your best cooldown. This is a one minute cooldown. This is normally the first cooldown I press when someone's taking damage. If I get out of CC and someone's low, I will try a Chi G. And again, you could hit pets, you could hit whatever you need to. Just make sure you're doing damage. But Chi G is the first cooldown I press. And then from there, it just depends on the situation. If someone is taking mostly single target damage, I will press Life Cocoon on them. That's that's pretty much that's pretty much what I do. If it's mostly AOE damage going out, I'll press revival. Th those the th th those are the situations. And then finally, I'll press celestial conduit. The reason I press celestial conduit last is because at the end of the channel, you spawn or you get the buff from Yulon that makes it so your cooldowns restore faster. Your, your life cocoon and thunder focus T rising sun kick renewing mist. But most importantly, your life cocoon. So. I'll always try to, I wouldn't say, you know, just, just throw life cocoon out and then press celestial conduit so you get the cooldown reduction. I wouldn't do that, but in, in a perfect world, my life cocoon's on cooldown when I press celestial conduit. That way, my life cocoon, I can get back faster. So I should get my Yulon. You'd see my, my life cocoon's ticking away much faster now. So I would recommend trying to do that. It obviously... That's only in a perfect world. If you can't do that, it's completely fine. But that's kind of the rotation I do as far as cooldowns go. Defensive cooldowns. And this is a big issue I see with newer fist weavers. And I do get this comment a lot that like, hey, I'm fist weaving and I'm dying. <laughs> I Why am I dying so much? And I can hopefully help with that. You do have some defensive cooldowns. But the first cooldown I want to talk about is your mobility. You're, I, even though you're fist weaving and you're using your own ability to get to targets and you're you know you're using your class to get to them and you're rolling to get to them you cannot waste your mobility all the time on trying to get to a target you do need to spend some time kiting so what i recommend first cooldown all the time every time is and this is the question i'll ask is are you porting if i take if i'm starting to take any amount of damage and if I, let's just say i'm playing eminence right let's just say i'm playing eminence here and i'm playing into a i don't know a ret warrior or something like that and they're hitting me as soon as i am hodged i am porting instantly i know that if depending on what i'm playing obviously you know ret pally can sank me but let's just say i don't i will port instantly and i'll throw an envelope mist on myself behind the pillar and then i'll port back that's what I'll do every single time. That way I have a hot going back into battle and I have some kind of healing going on me and then I'll just continue just doing damage. That's your first thing. Uh, kiting is also kind of important. I would recommend maybe, you know, staying closer to a pillar if you can. And that way you can kind of like use the pillar to your advantage. Maybe like bring them LOS a little bit, rising sun kick, you know, something like that. But for the most part, you're 
trying to use your mobility to get to targets. But if you're playing against melee, you shouldn't have to use your mobility to get to targets. So I would recommend porting first, using your mobility next, especially if a team is all inning on you and they're not really hitting other people, then you just need to worry about yourself and try to get some healing on yourself. Obviously, you could start a focus team about miss yourself and then make sure you're using your Zen Sphere on somebody because again, it's 10% increased damage from everything, but it's also 10% decreased damage to you. So if, uh, what, who, who, what hit, everything hits harder. Now let's just say you're playing against a Fury Warrior, right? Just put Expel Harm on them. Let's just say they're not even the kill target, right? They're, you're trying to kill the Death Knight on their team, but the Fury Warrior is the one hitting you. I mean, I would still go for the 10% decrease damage on you, and that way you can keep doing damage, and you just get that le that lesser damage on you, which is kind of important. As far as cooldowns go for defensive cooldowns, you don't have many. You know, you have your Diffuse Magic, which is nice, right? So this makes it so you reduce magic damage you take by 60% and reverses any damage on you, like any dots on you. Which is good versus, you know, Affliction Warlock Shadow Priest, but it's not going to help too much against anything else. If you're playing against DKs with magic damage or rep alleys, I would recommend playing Yulon's Grace because they have magic damage, but Diffuse Magic doesn't help too much versus them. That's just a passive shield you're going to get. And then you have Fort Brew, which you have like three talents, right? You have Fort Brew, you have the 30% cooldown reduction or 30 second cooldown reduction. Then you have Nyus's Protection, which gives you a pretty big shield. So you have those two cooldowns, but... As far as defensive cooldowns, that's pretty much all you got. You have to rely on your port. You have to heavily rely on your port. And then, like, maybe casting a Shadow's Gift on you, right? To keep yourself alive. Maybe put a Hotter Self, uh, you know, Renewing Mist on you, and then port back. And then you have your Thunder Focus and Enveloping Mist. But outside of that, you have your Fort Brew Diffuse Magic. And after that, you're kind of <laughs> you're kind of struggling a little bit. Obviously, you have your major cooldowns that you can press. But um, as far as personal cooldowns go, you're kind of just trying to heal through the damage a little bit. And focusing on not overlapping them. Try not to overlap your cooldowns and just focus on doing your damage rotation and use your mobility to kind of prevent having to use your major defensive cooldowns. Best comps. So for cast and mist weaver, the best comps are not double melee. For a fist weaver, you want to play with double melee because they stay in range of your healing, right? If you're playing with a warlock and you're fist weaving and they port 40 yards away from your ancient teachings and you're doing damage, you actually you're not healing them. So obviously double melee is really good. So I would stick to turbo. TSG, Rhett Warrior is the classic. Those are the big three I would play with. However, I have Fist Weave with other comps. I have Fist Weave with Feral Dev, which I think is one of the best comps you can play as a Fist Weaver, even though it's not double melee. Feral Dev, if they're both really good, uh, Fist Weaver would be good with them. And then I have played with Demo Warlock Ellie or Frost Mage Demo. Those are the two because the Frost Mage can keep the enemy slowed. So you could just have pretty much full uptime on them. So those are the comps I would play. I think the S tier comps are Feral Dev and Ret Warrior. And then everything below that are pretty much the same. It just depends on if you can, you know, find the, the, the teammates to queue them. But I would try to, if you could play one of those S tier comps for Fist Fever, I think you'll be in, in good hands. Macros. So there are actually, there are actually some really important macros you need to play as a Fist Weaver. What these macros do, and I have this for Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. If you detarget an enemy to envelop a mist or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you detarget an enemy, this will continue doing damage to the last person you targeted. Let me show you what these macros do. So I'm just going to do my rotation. What this does is if I hit this enemy and I detarget them and let's just say i need to put envelopment on somebody and i target a teammate and i go for rising sun kick i don't need to target this enemy to do my full damage rotation you could see i am doing my full tiger palm rising sun kick blackout kicks here and i am not targeting anything and that's and obviously it just swapped there but um i don't need to target anything if i especially if i keep targeting my teammate i'm still doing my full rotation i am not hitting or i am not targeting any of these things that's what these macros do they are absolutely i would say mandatory macros for fist weaver so i'll put that in the description those macros are super important outside of those macros i use arena one two three for paralysis and for disarm i don't know which disarm right here disarm one two three people have focus macros i have arena one two three macros it's just how they are organized in my brain so this helps me a lot and then from there there's really not too much as far as macros go obviously every guide i always say to use this macro so this makes it so you don't life cocoon or accidentally life cocoon yourself or you know another person when they are mind controlled or dead so if you're ever in an rbg and you've ever accidentally life cocoon yourself because you're targeting someone that's dead this will prevent that from mapping or mind control anything like that 
GG, so this is a big red ray gun. <laughs> so this is just, um, this is a toy. This is a toy. So you press GG, she makes it just big and red. Look at her. She's massive. That You really, you got to win the mind games in arena. So always go for the big red ray gun. <laughs> I think you can buy it on the auction house. Any other macros? I don't have any other mac. Oh, taunt macros. Yeah, these are important. These are important for fist weaving. So this will taunt arena one, two, three pets. And you want to weave this into your rotation because this can break crowd control. So if I'm playing against a hunter or a warlock and they have, you know, they have trap or fear or whatever, and I'm just doing my rotation, I'll always try to provoke um, arena one, two, three pets just so it has a chance of breaking CC. Nothing crazy because normally when you're fist weaving, you're like in the fight. So it'll normally break anyway, but still good to have. Outside of that, I don't think I have too many other macros. I, yeah, I don't have other macros for fist. Oh, t uh, Tiger's Lust. This is important. Are we going to three? And then I have Tiger's Lust for myself, so I don't need to target anything else. And I have that for party members as well. But yeah, th that's it for my macros. I have nothing else for macros. If you have any other macros, though, please let me know. I would love to see any macros that people have. I am obsessed with them. So anything else, please let me know. Put it in, in the comments, but those are my macros. And that is it for the Fist Weaver Guide. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions about Fist Weaving, Miss Weaving, anything. I am love talking wow so please let me know i hope this was helpful for anyone who's new to fist weaver or trying to pick it up or even experienced miss weaver maybe you learned something and please let me know in the comments because i thrive off of getting comments that this helps so that is it for me if you have any questions please let me know and hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you later